This is the PK56. Uh, these have become quite cheap to pick up recently. Uh, I've been sort of on the lookout for one for a while. I have had the little uh, sort of the vials that go in this bit of equipment. So again, it's a dissimilar. Uh, these are called the, uh, the DP70 and they are little vials of liquid. And essentially, as they get exposed to radiation, uh, the liquid changes color. Now, these were very, very easy to pick up. I've seen uh, hundreds of these for sale over the years. You can pick one up for about five or six pounds. But I very rarely see the uh, the actual sort of the unit which lets you read this uh, and see how much radiation you know they've been exposed to. Uh, these very rarely come up for sale, but in the last sort of six or seven months, they've become really cheap and really easy to get a hold of. And I thought I might as well just go for one. Now, in, in terms of decimeters, this is quite a, well, it's a pretty convoluted way of doing it. Uh, obviously, you know, in the UK, we're more used to, you know, this sort of version, the pen decimeter, and even the Soviets, you know, used the pen decimeter as well. And then you had a charging unit here that run off a battery that you could then charge the unit and you could use this, you know, thousands of times this is a one-shot deal you know once it was used it was used and that was it uh and then i've also got the sort of the, the later cold war period sort of gulf war period watch style decimeters uh that you the, i mean the piece of equipment to charge these was was massive it came in its own big massive carry case uh i did own one um a number of years ago but because it was late cold war uh it, you know, I ended up swapping it for something. I can't even remember now what I swapped it for, but uh, I still got one of the watches for it. And then I have the ID11, uh, the little sort of key ring decimeters that would have been worn by uh, the staff at Chernobyl. And works in a very, very similar way to this, actually, you know, very similar way uh, that this will change color. And then this little piece of crystal here, that will change colour as well, depending on how much radiation you've been exposed to. Okay, I'll show you how this all goes together. Um, comes in a nice little metal case. Uh, it's got PK56 written on the lid. Inside we have, uh, as always, a really nice instruction manual uh, in Polish this time. And uh, Kolorimeter uh, stands for colour meter, you'll be surprised to hear. Pr reasonably easy to work out. Uh, we have a little cleaning cloth, that's to clean the lenses. Uh, we have three uh, of the little uh, DP70 uh, vials in here, and these are control vials, so these are to be used uh, as, you know, these aren't really supposed to be uh, exposed to any radiation. Those are your control vials so that you can read this one. So you'd have kept this one on your person, and this would have been the piece of equipment then that told you how much radiation you've been exposed to. So we've got that, we've got that, and we've got that, and then we have this straw, which is shown in the instructions, uh, but I have no idea what it does. Uh, if anybody knows what this is for, please let me know. Maybe if you get thirsty, you can break it open and drink the liquid. Uh, I don't know, but please, if anybody knows what it is, please let me know. Right, we'll move that box to one side. In fact, we'll take out one of the little uh, control vials. Move this to one side. So, in the box, uh, actually looks like, if anybody's seen The Man of the Golden Gun. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, what's that film called? It'll come to me in a second. It's a Clint Eastwood movie uh, where he's uh, a member of the Secret Service and the assassin builds a wooden gun. And it actually looks a lot like this, if I remember rightly, when he puts it together. It actually looks a lot like that. Uh, it'll come to In the Line of Fire. That's it. It looks like the gun from In the Line of Fire. Bit of pointless trivia there for you. Right, so the unit itself hinges open. In this little box, we have the little color code wheel. And you can see that it's uh, numbered 0 to 800 for your radiation exposure. And it's uh, you can hopefully see the different colors there as you turn it. And that will correspond to the different color of the liquid. And then there's a little sort of anti-slip wheel here. And I have found the best way to put it on is actually to put it on upside down. You're supposed to put it on here and then hinge it shut. But I find that this little bit gets bent here. So what I do is I put it on at the top first and then that locks it in place. And then that's a little lock. So if you get to the certain point and you've got the color matched, uh, 
you can lock it and then that doesn't turn. So we'll put it to zero and it's on zero. Then you turn the unit over and at the bottom there's a little ball bearing just at the bottom there, so hopefully you can see. And that corresponds to the little notch there at the bottom of this. And that slides in. So we have the little unit as so. And then you can see the frosted glass at the bottom. Well, this bit hinges open. And then we have K written there. And K stands for control. So we take our control vial. And there's our control vial. And in fact, it says K on it. And we put that into control. And you put it in that way first. So the uh, pointy end sticking out. And then the unit that you've been walking around all day with. Which actually isn't as white. I've had this one sitting up beside my uh, check sources for about two years. And I've actually noticed that is actually starting to change colour. Um, I'll have to check. I'm almost certain that is a different colour. Is, there is a slight red or purpley tinge to that. That is interesting. Right, okay. So I'll close that. And then we close that. Oh, and let's try to get these straight. I'll make sure I haven't bent this as I've been doing it. Now what have I done? Oh, it's locking itself just here. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna just bunched up a little bit here just on the hinge. And that is it. That is it set up. Now, if I look through this, I can see the liquid. Now you will not be able to. So what I'm gonna do is turn this light on and then I'm gonna hold the light up just underneath like that. And hopefully you can see the split, sort of like virtual reality actually, split inside it. And as I turn that, it changes the color on the right hand side. And it lets you see what the color is. So once you've got it to the right color, that matches, so the two match, uh, you realize then that you've got the right uh, radioactive dose. So we have 150 there. So obviously I just, you know, that's just not, not the actual color it is, but we're just playing about here. But if I take the two of these out again, um, so as again, as I said, that's a one shot deal. So once you've taken that, uh, you just, that'll be thrown away and that's you done. And then you change for another one and you carry it around for the rest of the day. So what I want to do is I want to just check this very, very quickly. So that one is the control. So that was the one that uh, I had from here. And this is the one that I've had beside my check sources. And I am pretty sure that that is slightly redder than this one. Now, it could just be my eyes deceiving me, but I'm almost sure. Yeah, I think it is. Now, what, what I might do is my... Yeah, my DP63, what I will probably do is I'll put this in with the highest radioactive source I have for a couple of, or maybe a couple of months and I'll see what happens to see if it changes colour, if it goes any redder. And that'll be quite a nice little test for this actually, just to see. But yeah, I'll do that, I'll try that. But yeah, it's a, it's an interesting piece of equipment and I think it's cheap enough that uh, you know, if you're into the Cold War and you're into radiation, it's quite a nice, nice little thing to pick up because it's not expensive. It's not going to break the bank and it has a nice little bit of history associated with it and, uh, you know, what it would have been used for. And it just shows how different nations, uh, you know, how they <laughs> decided that they were going to, uh, you know, make the scimitars. And, you know, the UK went for stuff like this. And uh, Warsaw Pact companies, or <laughs> Warsaw Pact companies, Warsaw Pact countries went for stuff like this. So, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I really like it. I'm glad I got one. Um, I've been, you know, umming, umming and eyeing about getting one for a couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, 18 quid is, uh, is not going to break the bank. And, and, you know, for the cost of some of the things I bought recently, you know, this was nothing really. Um, and it's a nice little kit. It all goes together well. And uh, lovely little box. And there we go. It all goes back together. So yeah, if you've been thinking about getting one, yeah, probably go for one. It's uh, it's cheap enough that uh, it's, uh, it, it's it's nice for, 
for any collection, any Cold War collection. But there we go, the PK56 color meter, the scimitar. Uh, yeah, well worth buying. Uh, listen, folks, as always, thank you very, very much for watching. And uh, hopefully I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.